Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's look at buying apps when you own an iPhone and also an iPad. So it used to be simple. You used to just go to the App Store and you can just buy an app and it will work on your iPhone. If you had an iPod Touch, it would also work there, except of course in cases where there was a hardware difference. Like for instance, if you needed a camera and there's no camera on the iPod Touch. But there's basically only one type of app. So when the iPad came along, it basically meant that you could take all of your iPhone and iPod Touch apps and run them on your iPad. The screen's bigger, but you could double the size of the apps so that they almost fit on the iPad screen. So the idea was you didn't have to buy any of your apps again. All of your iPhone apps worked on the iPad. Well, not quite true. So the idea was that developers could take their apps, the ones you've owned all along, and update them for the iPad. Make them recognize the larger screen so that on the iPad they display large and on the iPhone they display small. These are called universal apps and indeed many developers update their apps so that they will work on both the iPad and the iPhone. But other developers went a different way. They decided instead of creating a universal app to create a separate app for the iPad. So they would sell one app for the iPhone and this would work on the iPad too if you doubled the size. But they created a specific app that looked really good on the iPad. These are sometimes called for iPad apps or even HD apps. So there's the problem. You have to repurchase the app if you have an iPad, at least if you want the best version for the iPad. So some of us, if we liked our apps, had to buy two copies, one originally for the iPhone and then buy it again when we got our iPad. Now this is an Apple's choice, this is the developer's choice. The developer can update any app to make it universal or they can split them into two different apps and make people that own both devices like myself purchase them twice. And I should also note that now there's a possibility of a fourth app. Some apps have been improved for the iPhone 4 which is a higher screen resolution. So they look good on the iPhone 4 and it's technically possible to have a iPhone 4 specific app that is different than the iPhone 3GS or 3G or the original iPhone version. And we've already seen some apps that are only for the iPhone 4, like for instance the iMovie app. And these are largely because of the fast processor in the iPhone 4. So we'll see if developers further split their apps off and make us repurchase their apps when you upgrade your iPhone. So when shopping in iTunes, note that when you do a search, you'll find apps listed as either iPad apps or iPhone apps. So the iPad apps are always going to look good on the iPad. But some of those iPhone apps will actually be universal apps and will work fine on the iPad. Now you can't trust the requirements part of a description uh, to figure out whether or not it looks good on the iPad. Because it'll say it's iPad compatible if it works on the iPad. It doesn't mean the developer's done anything special to make it look good on the iPad screen. So what it often comes down to is checking the description in iTunes and also looking in the screenshots. A lot of iPhone and iPad Universal apps will actually have screenshots for both. and That's a way to prove that it will look good on both devices. Now, If you've already purchased this app, then there's nothing to do but just keep it up to date and once a developer updates it for the iPad to make it a Universal app, you'll just have that version. So it is very confusing to figure out if an app is built specially for the iPad or if it's a universal app or if it's one that's only built for the iPhone not taking the iPad into account. But I hope at least this video has made it a little bit clearer when looking through apps in the store. Till next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.